Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June 4th Project Working Group Weekly Sync. Uh, we are going to go over some of our Q2 epics and progress on those. And um, please add any additional agenda items to our doc. And we can get started. Um, Jessica or Andrew, do one of you two want to give a quick update on package managers research and knowledge sharing? Both at once. You want to take it, Andrew? Uh, sure. Yeah. So we've um, been. I shouldn't have asked. I'm a special in any of that. No, sorry. Maybe you can go, Jessica, whilst I uh, switch to a slightly <laughs> yeah, better. That sounds connection. good. Um, so, so yeah, we we did a lot of really good work um, this week. Had a couple of really very productive discussions, very free for all discussions that are starting to focus in terms of putting together the next six months roadmap, um, which is super. So watch that space. Um, having another chat, I believe, on Friday uh, to get a little bit further on that. Um, also solidified plans for the package manager's deep dive at IPFS camp. That's going to be a slightly different deep dive than some of the others in that we're going to be talking about um, some of the problems facing package managers and users and maintainers um, that IPFS could help solve. So talking about both pain points and opportunity points, these are things that we've uncovered during our, our research this spring, um, but we also want to make sure that as we're putting together our roadmap for the next six months that we're getting a good um, overview of the ranking and the general importance of these things that we've come up with. Um, and then newsflash, there's this shiny thing called Entropic, and maybe Andrew is not a robot anymore because he did all the work. I'd like him to talk about that. Are you de-robotified, Andrew? Uh, maybe. Do I, how robot-y do I sound? Um, so yeah, there's a um, the ex CTO of npm has uh, put out like it's very early right now um, for a federated package manager. Um, the idea being that it's an easy registry to spin up uh, for yourself, and it will proxy out to other uh, to npm where it can't find packages, but allows you to actually publish packages to your own mini registry and then have a certain amount of um, syncing in between them. Uh, still kind of working out exactly all of the details. There's a there's kind of a basic working thing there, but it, it doesn't have a lot of the kind of federated things that you would expect in something like Mastodon yet. Uh, the, interest, the really interesting bit is the internals look awful lot like IPFS um, and IPLD, and uh, I believe we'll be able to add in IPFS support, which if it's in both the client and the individual federated registry instances, then could potentially be a really big win for, um, because it's so early, there's very little in terms of uh, kind of changes need to be made, but also every individual instance can choose whether they wish to kind of run an IPFS version or a, a, a file system version, um, which for some setups like on Heroku where you have no disk is uh, potentially a really cost efficient way of um, of running uh, an instance for yourself. So uh, I did some research and the kind of the next steps will be to uh, to reach out and kind of work out a good way to to see how we can work together um, and actually like to try and implement uh, real IPFS integration into a package manager. The link is in the Google Doc if anyone wants to um, dive in and see more details or wants to, uh, to get involved in like planning how best to support it. 
I think Andrew already has some some pointers in that write up. Thank you, Andrew, for like this was announced on like Saturday, and Andrew already has a write up on it. So everyone, give him major kudos for being a speed demon and getting us the like hot off the presses research and analysis. Because damn, that's awesome. Um, so I think there's some pointers in there as well into like um, you know here are the areas that are going to be a little bit um, trickier or or things that make this a little bit rougher than we'd like it to um, and and more on that as it comes to kind of our, our road mapping work as well of, of what we're going to be needing to to do to make this and and similar sorts of things um, actually really pleasant and obvious wins for all the people trying to adopt um, Andrew, the other ahead. thing just to throw in it that i think we can do a good job of um trying to make it a, a community integration rather than like um as we said on a call the other day, we don't want any package manager to put all their eggs in our basket. Uh, like it's even worse than us putting all of our own eggs in our own basket. Getting asking someone else to put their eggs in our basket is uh, is a big, big ask. So, being able to have potentially even the the proposal could enable uh, support for other systems like DAT, and the user or um, the default choice can be switched out. Uh, which means that the project isn't tied to uh, like, oh, you definitely have to use IPFS, um, but does enable it to be deeply integrated at the same time if if you do choose to use it, um, rather than it just being an edge case. I just had a, a thought and I think it sort of plays into our hands that um, we're content addressed and there's so much fragmentation, there's gonna be a whole, bun whole bunch of people trying to solve decentralized NPM at the same time, but they're all storing the exact same blobs, the same tarballs for all the things. So like, you know, if, if even the ones that aren't winning, you know, it, they're still providing extra peers for all these, these things. So the content will be on IPFS and maintained if we can partner with some of them. Awesome, thank you both for the update, that's phenomenal. Um, I don't see a David on this call, um, but maybe we can crowdsource an update on IPFS camps since so many people have their fingers in, in different chunks of the pie. Um, from, from my understanding, everyone from the IPFS team who's applied to attend um, IPFS camp should have an email that I think includes all trainers as well. You know, if you're coming and to, to train people at IPFS camp, you definitely need to be coming. So uh, make sure to, I think there's, click the thing. I think it's gonna enable us to like keep track of the number of people that are coming to IPFS camp really effectively. So check your email um, and just make sure to do whatever the email tells you to do. I haven't clicked on my email yet. So who knows what's in there, but I'm sure something phenomenal. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about that, feel free to email me or David or someone, Jessica. You're muted. Sorry. Um, so awesome news is pending one confirmation. We have all of the lightning talk slots full up, which is super, super. Um, we had originally been like, all right, like let's just take everybody and I don't know, present them online or something afterwards. But the cool thing is um, we are actually, there's going to be a meetup in Barcelona proper the night before camp starts. So um, while we have, as far as I know, pending weirdness, all the lightning talks full up for camp itself. Um, we would love to toss a couple of extra lightning talks into that pre-meetup on Wednesday night. So with that in mind, um, I will, I'll throw the link to the confirmed lightning talks in the, um, summer, in the notes document. But if you can think of anybody who isn't in that list, please send them my way. Because now is the perfect time to get people roped in to give them enough time to put together a talk that you know won't stress them out and keep them all night trying to do it. So thanks in advance. Woohoo, good call. Um, Arkady, is this your, your sci-fi fair update? Anything there? Uh, well, so, yeah, actually, so I have a couple of things. So one thing that I wanted to, uh, I actually wanted to be to address uh, was uh, the uh, changing over of the repo to the public one, so stuff got moved over to the public repo. So now we and there was this idea of giving um, everyone who's uh, been accepted 
uh, uh, rights or contributor access to that repo. So just wanted an update on that. Uh, how to you know get them get them more involved? Uh, does anyone know? Um, I I wasn't. I don't know. Um, I know that we have started adding, giving people, especially people who are creating courses, um, access to the existing repo, which didn't involve migrating everything. Um, hmm. Okay, all right, so it, it sounds like maybe I should just find, find other ways, maybe that one isn't working out. Um, so the production of the science fair is, is coming along. We have uh, maybe like uh, four or five like fully confirmed people. Uh, everyone else is kind of in flight in various stages. Uh, we definitely want more people to submit their projects. Um, I'm sure there, there's going to be a lot of interest. Uh, I was waiting for this uh, as a process to uh, uh, kick in, but I, it's not sure what's happening with that. So uh, I guess we'll just proceed with, with alternate means. Okay. Uh, and I uh, yeah, instructions and an intake form are all posted. So if anyone is presenting please fill that out i think it's a great opportunity for for us to just stick cool things on on monitors and screens seemingly there is a new uh, just going to wrap my my personal screen again yeah. this thing is a lifesaver it's like a little portable monitor that i take with me traveling all the time which is yeah. unbelievable best christmas present ever um and now they have two new versions one of which is like force touch so you can like tap on it and like explore stuff which is unbelievable and they also have a gaming one if you are a heavy switch user and get annoyed playing mario kart with your friends on a tiny screen um so just saying if anyone wants to invest and bring it to ipfs camp these are well worth the investment um and i'm sure um yeah make make everyone more productive yeah, we'll be we'll be renting uh, monitors for people anyway, so this might actually end up costing like a comparable amount to like a real monitor rental. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks or something. I will yeah, send and if people, yeah, if people have things that are like they don't think that are enough for a full-on uh, sci-fi show like Booth, uh, I think we will have a bunch of like smaller things consolidated into one booth where there'll be like a rotating kind of slideshow like video reel. So, uh, you know, don't be shy, speak up. All right, any other IPFS camp related updates, questions, concerns? Hey. Go ahead, Terry. Terry, thanks. Um, yeah, so just a quick note, uh, I obviously have been a little bit off the grid lately, but to the best of my knowledge, in terms of like content that will be delivered through Proto School as its format, the only thing I'm aware of right now is Alan using the new MFS tutorial, the seem to be released MFS tutorial in his core workshop. Um, so if anyone else has heard rumors of people actually presenting through Proto School, please let me know so I can get on that. If I remember correctly, the textile folks have also are also tentatively planning to use Proto School. They, they mentioned it earlier, and then I haven't seen any follow up, so I don't know if that's still the case or not. But yeah, I should clarify. It it didn't come up in our elective meetup with them last week. Okay. So we'll do a check in with them this week and find out for sure. Cool. Thanks. Cool. All right, any, anything else? Nope. Okay, cool. Um, our last um, epic topic to talk about is leveling up the org. Um, we reran some of our KPIs last week, um, looking at um, some of the high level metrics around uh, kind of IPFS visibility, which is a very rough proxy by, by looking at mentions <laughs> um, and some of the like public network stats um, by looking at the libpp network and how many IPFS nodes are on it. And we see very nice improvements since um, when we last measured in kind of mid-March. Um, so things are doing quite well. Um, a lot of this is not necessarily um, like, uh, 
organic growth apace. Um, I think our mentions have to do with, we have IPFS camp coming up and are uh, talking a lot about that with, with all of the folks who are coming. Um, and the network size stuff has to do with the changes we've made to libp2p with auto relay. Um, and so people are just shuttling through um, kind of more, more central paths in the network and therefore are, are easier to find a lot of different peers and, and pull them within a uh, regular period of time, but still pretty exciting. Um, it gives us slightly better understanding of all of the, the nodes that do exist somewhere in the network. We just previously weren't reaching them in our 24 hour little ping cycle. Um, and so that's awesome. Um, quick, that ties me into a quick reminder that like we are, we are now significantly past the middle of the quarter. Um, I think in about two-ish weeks, we're gonna be doing next quarter's uh, look ahead at the, um, like right before IPFS camp. And so, uh, Everyone who we've we've mostly gone through. I took a look, quick look at the OKR sheet. Um, almost all of the working groups have gone through and and done grading um, for for mid quarter. Um, but something that I hoped we could do this quarter was give kind of like little summarized updates from each working group on kind of like this is what's going really well. This is what's a little bit at risk, um, which is nice synthesis for ourselves to understand what we need to be focusing more on. Um, and also useful for other working groups to get kind of, without looking at every other working group's sheet, a high level picture of like, this is on track, this is not so much on track. So especially the folks who are in this call, can I ask you guys to, um, I, will, I will stick in a link to this issue, but if you could just take five minutes and write like three bullet points, um, I think that will help open the floodgates and other other working groups as well will will jump on that bandwagon if it gets more traction than me just painting it, um, and and I think that would be really useful for everyone. Um, so I'll stick that in the chat. Any okay? I guess I had another item. Dietrich, can you go first while I find this link? Yeah, sure. I, I added a link to uh, uh, Michael and Molly had done a little work around rebooting the community efforts and uh, put a proposal there for structuring that work and through the lens of these three different roles. If you click through the issue there, uh, definitely one thing, this is the type of thing that affects all the working groups to some extent and also all of the staff of all of the working groups since this is a project. There's a lot of open source, a lot of public facing activity, and we all kind of do a little bit of this stuff all the time. Um, so just a quick shout out to them for their great work in kicking this off and, and keeping it going after the nature of the previous community working group kind of changed. And uh, a request to all of you to spend a minute and drop your thoughts in there if you have some. Thanks, good call out. I think, I mean, the, the highest level question that I see from Dietrich's note on it is kind of um, whether this is focused more on um, contributors or users, and if so, what kind of, of those things are we looking at? Um, I think my, the thing that's top of mind for me is like, is, is pure usability, so not even contribute, you know, it has to be usable, um, in some way it has to be un understandable enough that you can use it. Like that's actually, I think the pre bar before being usable enough that you can contribute to it. Cause there's like a, a level of depth you need to be able to get into to like figure out how to make it do the thing you want it to do. And then there's a level of depth to like, I know now how to like contribute back into it. Um, but I think one drives the other as well. Um, like you, if you care about using something, then you're more likely to help tweak that little thing that's going to, um, make it even even better for your use case. And so I would, I'd probably focus slightly first on um, usability. I also just think we, we still have a ways to go in, in pure usability um, and then focus, like have, have contribution be something that like we, we organically support from that point. That I can respond to that. I, yeah. Terry, go ahead. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you on that. And this is something that we looked at specifically when we realized we were getting overwhelmed in the last iteration of this team, just getting overwhelmed by problems in many directions. And when Michael looked at it, I, my impression of 
the assessment was you can think of this as a funnel and you have to have a user for them to become a contributor and there's just so much on that point as you said so that would be my inclination also but i do think stuff like the contributor um office hours that ollie started like there are some small some small things you can pick off to improve the contributor experience along the way but i totally agree with you molly yeah even just like rewarding it like I, you know i would say let's make it really easy to use and then let's celebrate people when they contribute as well and uh maybe the combination of those things will um be, be a better fit but first first off it's we gotta just document the things that do the things um like especially if there's things we're recommending lots of people to do that make our lives easier and make the network better um let's maybe tell people about it and explain to them why because then they're more likely to do it and it makes it better for everybody so win-win cool any other thoughts on this topic please add them to here but also if we if we mention them here maybe we'll be reminded would it be one of these three people we're hiring that would be in charge of this working group or someone who's already here would move into that role or what are you envisioning yeah um i i think like for for now i think we're hoping to bring someone into kind of the project working group space who will be doing more of this community stuff whether that's someone who's already contributing to the project um i know there are a lot of awesome humans kind of within our close working groups or just like very active in um um, the various like repos, team management repo, or, or helping out in other parts of our community on the forum and on the IRC, um, who could probably be good fits for that. And so um, source those people, try and bring them, bring them closer, bring them to this um, forum or, or connect them more closely. Um, I think there's also like opportunity to look into other communities and find people who are doing a really good job of this elsewhere and could bring some of those best practices and um, and knowledge to our group who are not already in the IPFS community. So I think a little bit of both. Um, I think in the very short term, um, to to kind of Michael's point, um, we're going to start like incubating this in the project working group before we try and and restart something like a community working group. Um, and I did prioritize kind of the the roles that I think are most critical, mostly based on the feedback that we, we talked about in, um, in previous calls. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think anything where we bring on someone who's like an expert at this stuff um, will be empowering and trusting that expert to also think about how our strategy should evolve going forward um, and, and bring that expertise and knowledge to ensuring that what we think right now is the best path is actually optimal. Cool. Um, last three minutes. Just question whether folks, um, currently we record these meetings, but we kind of stick them in a drive folder somewhere. Um, any concerns with sticking them up on YouTube instead? I think we've been pretty intermittent about actually doing that in the past, but it makes them much more accessible. Downside, you get to see me eating breakfast in the mornings sometimes, which is always lovely. Um, but pros, everyone who wants to index on any of our road mapping conversations, any of our, our other um, kind of project level thoughts, uh, what's happening in this working group, just it's a lot more accessible than trying to find a link somewhere in a GitHub issue and a you know, drive folder, blah, blah, blah. Even if it is technically accessible, it's less so. Any, any concerns? Jim? Just generally, I think we should try to get more and more stuff onto YouTube. But I think the, I think we're, we'll know we're actually being successful when people start from the community start coming into the calls which is going to decrease their productivity perhaps in a lot of ways because they'll like derail things. So, um, so I think the fact that nobody comes into the calls right now means that we're successfully hiding them, but then like that's not good in a way, so. Yep. Yeah, I think um, sticking them up on YouTube will, will start um, helping people. Stick them up. I don't know how to stick something on DTube. I've, I've gone to DTube a number of times, but I don't own any Steam. And I think you have to own Steam to put things on YouTube. If anyone has Steam, be my guest. Um, and maybe start with like a video that's likely to become popular, I think. Otherwise, it's a, it's a money expenditure. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. I think what would make sense is perhaps like building out um, like a, 
a uh, calendar page with uh, video links and then maybe unlisting the meeting. So they're still there if you follow the link from the calendar page because they're basically sort of like staff meetings. But like right now, people, it's hard to discover the community calendar if it is, even is out there. Um, um, it's on the you know. community repo. I put a big picture of it on the community repo because yeah. it used to just be a little URL. And I was like, no, 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 guys, we need a nice big image. So it'd be nice if, if just like, you know, this is like the IPFS project. This is how you get involved. Go here. Here's, here's where all the meetings are. There's videos of them in notes. Um, but, but I think like having like, probably we Zach has a on this. On the, like, the website? Yeah. Um, the, uh, could be able to link to it. The, the YouTube itself doesn't see, feel very curated. So, so like, we just dump everything there. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> We have playlists, but yeah, we haven't. Um, it would be great if someone who is thinking about all of our public communication channels like IRC and the forum and YouTube, thank you for adding another one that we need to, to focus on. But um, yeah, anyone has bandwidth or strong opinions. The fact that every time you go to the IPFS channel, you hear the same hi video start auto playing at you every single time drives me a little bit bonkers. Um, we could do a better job at that. I've, I actually tried to reconfigure that. It, it got to that level of like, nah, this, this has to stop. And I couldn't figure out how to. Um, YouTube Creator Studio is like a little difficult to use. Um, if anyone has experience with it, let me know. I'd be happy to know. All right, okay, well, we are on time and I think we'll we'll call it there and this video will go up on YouTube. So starting the trend. Um, thank you all for a wunderbar meeting and see you next week.